amidst the windswept broom sage. While the cattle are settling in for the night, and the sun is about to set, Carlton Ward begins the search for the perfect landscape. Do you have any? Are there any cattle in any of the maiden camp areas now? Uh, not right, right now. Right. Um, winter, winter rye, or yeah, whatever. They're all far out from the woods by now. A picture that represents a part of Florida unchanged by time and generations of landowners. It's one of these kind of gems of what it used to look like centuries ago. A part of Florida in danger of disappearing forever. The Clay Ranches is one, is one of 40 or 50 landscapes in the state of Florida. They're the top of the state's priority acquisition list. Being here at the ranch to capture the land's beauty and highlight the property makes Carlton more than just a nature photographer. I think nature photography as a whole has been a little bit myopic in its focus in pre presenting nature as it exists without people. As a conservation photographer, Carlton has been working on photographs that highlight areas of Florida in need of protection. What I'm trying to do with my photography is raise, raise awareness for the less seen aspects of the Florida environment and the cultural legacies connected to those environments. We rode along with Carlton at the Clay Ranch in Putnam County in northern Florida. He and Chance Clay were racing the sunset scouting locations on the 3,000 acre farm. The Clay Ranch has a diverse landscape and Carlton is looking for one image to represent the essence of the land. Chance and his friend Michael Dean, with razor in tow, drive Carlton around to look for the right spot. There's the rye fields down there. I only have one, one frame, one image to do it all in, so I'm trying to find one that represents all these elements. He plans to feature the Clay Ranch in an upcoming calendar highlighting endangered lands as designated by Florida Forever, a state program designed to preserve Florida's natural and cultural heritage. If it wasn't for the cattle rancher, this ranch would not be protected. But if it wasn't for this ranch, there wouldn't be the cattle rancher. But getting the perfect shot takes time. With the landscape photography, um, you only have dawn and dusk. You've got two shots a day to try to get it. The first day proves to be difficult. Well, we found the perfect spot for a photograph. It shows the native grassland and the oak hammocks and got set up and drove all around this 3,000 acre ranch to find it and now the clouds came. So chances are we won't be able to get a shot tonight. So he'll start early tomorrow for a chance to capture the morning dew settling on the prairie. Today, Tommy Clay takes over showing Carlton some of the most beautiful acreage on his property. It's a source of pride and reassurance that the land that's been in his family for over 150 years will continue to be protected from outside developments. I kind of feel that the worst day on this ranch is perhaps better than the best day in town. A sentiment shared by all the members of the Clay family. Carlton himself is an eighth generation Floridian. The landscape and traditional culture represent a part of his heritage too. While photography began as a hobby for him, the idea to combine it with his love for nature came while working in Africa. I started out my career working in Central Africa with the Smithsonian. It was a really exciting opportunity working with scientists in an exotic place and doing a collection of images that hadn't been done before. But after bouncing back and forth out of the country for three years, every time I came back home, Florida had visibly changed and not necessarily for the better. While on assignment, Carlton took his own photographs and published a book to recognize the beauty found in Africa, hoping to inspire local conservation. The book was a success and Carlton realized the same idea could work for conservation efforts in Florida. I was working and exporting a conservation ethic to a developing country through my photography. Meanwhile, my home state was kind of losing its heritage and losing its land. So with confidence from his African experience, Carlton set out to mobilize Florida's preservation effort in a new way. He founded the Legacy Institute for Nature and Culture, also known as LINK, in hopes of reaching a new audience of potential activists. If people could see the beauty in his art and realize it came from their own backyard, then maybe they would be more apt to protect the lands. When we were trying to figure out the right name for Link, Legacy Institute for Nature and Culture. When, when, when that acronym arrived, the, the concept of connection kind of solidified it is, is what we do. And 
it, it's helping provide that connection. He teamed up with retired local TV news anchor Bob Heights to produce the documentary Florida Cowboys, which highlights a part of Florida many of today's residents don't relate to, but has been a significant part of Florida's history. Carlton also participated in Lights on Tampa, a public art event. It was an exciting opportunity to work with Lights on Tampa because that was the first public art installation I had done. Anyone and everyone is going to see it. They don't have to go to a gallery during defined hours and pay an admission fee. If you're going down Platte in Tampa, you're going to see the art. Carlton's photography featured in Lights on Tampa will be on permanent display at the Tampa Riverfront Walk as part of an educational component. If you're working as an artist and you have the opportunity or the knowledge to kind of shed some light on a subject or bring something uh, bring some awareness, I think, I think it's definitely an opportunity. While he's hesitant to call himself an artist, his work speaks for itself. With each photograph sold at a fine art gallery, on his website, or featured in a magazine, he knows he has the potential to reach a greater audience. If someone were to give me ten million dollars and say go put it to use for conservation, I wouldn't necessarily spend that money on science or research. I'd probably get an army of photographers and videographers and send them out to tell the stories that people need to know. Because I think science and research are important. I have a master's degree in ecology myself, but science falls short of reaching the public and you know, reaching out to people's hearts. So the media and the arts, I mean, it's, it's our role to help close that loop and bring that connection. Carlton's current project, which involves 11 other photographers, will capture 12 places chosen by Florida Forever to be featured in the new calendar. In 1871, a photographer named William Henry Jackson went into what is now Yellowstone National Park with the U.S. Geological Survey, and they created the first national park in the world by the combination of the science and the photography, and that's the ultimate goal. For Florida Matters, I'm Carson Cooper.